This is the Nebraska Radio Football Show, proudly brought to you by Channel. Channel Seedsmen place products to perform across Nebraska. Get expert advice that yields results at channel.com. And your Midwest Ford dealers, visit buyfordnow.com. Second and goal from the seven-yard line. Heinrich, long count, turns, gives it off to Gabe Irvin, left side. Gabe stiff arms a man, is in the end zone for a touchdown off the left end. Good. <laughs> it's a gold star stiff arm by 22 to find Pater. And the White extends their lead to 12 0. Now they motion a man. Harbor gets the snap. Back to throw. Holding, looking, step, throws. Pass wide open. Cat by Billy Kent for the two point conversion to make it 14 0. Sims by himself in the shotgun. Jeff gets the snap. Got a quarterback draw. Runs to the five and gets stood up and breaks a tackle into the end zone for a touchdown. There's the length and strength of Jeff Sims breaking a tackle. The two shedding those defenders and finding Pater. Here's your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome to our first show of the week. Glad you're with us. Hope you had a great weekend. And wow, what a way to start the week off. We've got the head football coach, Matt Rural, with us for the entire hour. You want to fire a question to him, you can certainly fire off a text to us, 402-413-2400. Great to have you with us. I've been dying to get your thoughts about spring football, about the spring game, about all the things you've been doing. How are you? You okay? I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. How's it, how has the last two and a half weeks since the game been? I mean, I know you talked about having to do exit interviews and those type of things. What, what's it been like for you? It's, it's been good. I think um, that time with the players, the ability to sit down with each, each young man and talk about where they see themselves, you know, their strengths, their weaknesses, their feedback, um, it's really valuable. You learn so much. In, in fact, I'm always... I'm always feeling a little bit like convicted, like, man, I should do this more often. But, uh, but I think it's good for them. You know, a lot of times they have a lot of things that are on their heart that they want to share. And um, I think we definitely got better as a program during that time. Because right now, coaches, your assistants can go out. You, you can't by rule, right? You have to stay. You can't go visit schools, I guess. Yeah, I, I can't go out recruiting um, by rule. Uh, so, so the coaches were in the first week. Um, I think maybe Bob or Ed went out for a day. But... It was really important for me that every, every guy on the team had a chance to meet with their position coach, meet with the coordinator, and then meet with me as well. And so uh, this past week, last week, uh, the coaches were all out on the road. You know, I'm in uh, with our recruiting staff and, and watching guys and trying to get ahead, um, trying to build a plan for the summer and build the best plan possible for the fall in terms of schedules and all of those things and making sure the guys uh, finish academically. So um, our guys in the weight room, they went down, they did a week of testing, so everything from the 225, you know, bench press to the 40-yard dash so we can sort of see where we are heading into the summer. So the player meetings happened. There was some attrition, which I knew you probably knew would happen. How about that whole process? How much do you assist in a young guy trying to make a tough decision whether to uproot and go somewhere else? Well, you know, so, so the, 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 the directive that I gave our coaches was no different than the directive I've given them since I started at Temple, and that's to talk to every player as if it was, you know, your, your nephew, your cousin, your younger brother. Um, give them that honest feedback. You know, like with our own kids, we'll tell them, you know, the truth. But sometimes, you know, uh, maybe we, we struggle to say things like that to our players. And so I want them to tell them what we saw their strengths, what we saw their weaknesses, uh, what we thought their role would be. And, um, you know, for some guys, you know, they, they, might, they might come here and, and be a great player and all of a sudden we show up and it's just a little different scheme. And, and you know, if they want to get on the field, then it's not quite the same scheme fit. And so I think it's really important that we, we're honest with the guys. We're not telling guys they have to leave, you know, um, if, if, they want to, if they want to be here, if they're dyed in the wool, like, hey, I'm a corn husker and this is where I want to be, then, then great. And so uh, we had guys who said, Coach, I want to be here no matter what. You know, whatever my role is, if, if it's to be on the scout team, I love this university. And other guys, hey, Coach, I, I want to play. Some guys, Coach, I've graduated, now I need to get on the field. And so just trying to handle every situation for what it is and that's an individual situation i think is important providing feedback and um uh helping guys make the best decision and being as involved or uninvolved as they want us to be some of the attrition came at the quarterback spot i think you anticipated that how do you feel about that room as we sit here in early may yeah you know so we, we had some guys who went into the, in, into the portal and uh, those were great conversations it was sort of you know that's different than playing linebacker that's different than playing tight end and running back you don't really rotate. Yeah. So, you know, if, if, if a guy's in a situation where, you know, it's his time to play and he really wants to play, you know, I, 
uh, I'm okay with the guy going into the portal and, and seeing if there's a better situation to get on the field. And if not, you know, we'd love to have somebody back. And so I know that might seem counterintuitive to a lot of people, but, you know, when you've been in the NFL like I have and, you know, guys go through free agency, you know, um, you want everyone to, to, to walk into everything eyes wide open. And so, um, you know, us, us being a new staff, we, we had this, some flexibility with some guys. And so, but the guys who didn't go in, you know, between Jeff and Heinrich and, and Chubba, just, just really happy with the way they did things. I think, um, you know, Jeff is, Jeff is a big dynamic athlete who's a great passer, a great teammate, works at the game. I think his best football's ahead of him. Um, I think we saw a glimpse in the spring game of what he can do. Uh, Heinrich, um, I'm, I'm so excited about his potential. I think he, he can be a, a difference maker for us. And, um, you know, I, I normally don't watch a lot of things. I went back and watched the TV copy of the spring game, and a lot was made about, hey, you know, Sat said his superpower was running it. I, I, I know Heinrich can throw the football and throw it well, so I'm excited about those two guys. And then Chubba's played a lot of football. And uh, to have Chubba back... Um, I think he, you know, adapting to a new offense, that's three offenses in three years. So adapting to a new offense, I felt like the last week and a half of spring ball, he really made a move. So I'm excited to see what these guys do this summer. How was Jeff's progression during spring? Did he, did he get a good grasp, you feel, of the offense as spring went along? Yeah, Jeff, Jeff's a really smart guy. And, you know, I want to say there was a – whatever. Coach Osborne was at the scrimmage, so I guess it would be our first scrimmage. That's where you really saw, um, you really saw the jump. Um, you know, he was live. Um, he made some plays with his feet, hit a couple big deep throws. And I think that's, you know, when you look at the Big Ten, uh, you go back to last year's game against, you know, Iowa. I think the ability for us as an offense, as a team, to, to run the football, uh, be physical, uh, be relentless with it, <laughs> be a body blows team that just, you know, tries to just, just not worry about knocking you out, but at the same time having the ability to be explosive in the passing game. Um, in that game, you know, some big passing plays led to a lead. And so I think we see that with Jeff. He can operate the offense. He can extend plays with his feet, but he can push the ball down the field. And I, that, that showed up in the first scrimmage and then the second scrimmage and then the game. So I feel really good saying that's who he is. Running back room, how did you feel that that group competed in the spring? And as we sit here with three or four months to go before the fall camp opens, how do you feel about that group? It's probably, probably our deepest room. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of talent in that room. Um, uh, you know, Gabe Irvin, you've heard me talk a lot about him. I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do uh, both as a leader and as a player. He's competitive. He's tough. He's big. He's physical. He's fast. Um, I think Ramir Johnson is just one of those guys you can build around, you know, catch the ball out of the backfield, pass, protect, special teams, can run the ball between the tackles and outside. Anthony Grant, you know, uh, dynamic runner. So it's not very often you have three guys like that. And Emmett Johnson's a guy that we're really high on, um, can do a lot of different things and, and can fill a lot of different voids for us. And then Quentin Ives is on his way in. And um, I know people haven't seen Quentin, yep. um, but uh, he's, he's a big physical athlete. And um, so that, that to me is a room that usually don't have that many guys in there. I thought Trevin Lubin did a great job this spring. And so I, I would say for us, you know, we want to run the football. We certainly have the guys to do it. You didn't mention the guy that had the first carry of the spring game, Bonner, who was a guy that you, I think you're really intrigued with him and what he can do. Yeah, I, 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 love, I love what Janeerin brings. You know, he's a wide out. We moved to sort of that F tight end yeah. and, and uh, kind of as the spring went on, you know, he, he, he played some fullback. And, you know, you get into the spring game and, and we're kind of using him on a couple different packages, you know. Um, you get in the spring game, you split the teams, you know, you don't always have the other fullback that's more of the sort of the hammer. So he had to go in there and do that. And I was really excited coming out of the game watching the tape. Uh, JB showed us that he can do that as well. So uh, it's not very often you have a guy that can lead on an ISO, uh, carry a belly play, and then run an option round on third down and win. And, and we have that in him. So uh, he, he's, really a, he, he's really an intriguing player, and, and I'm excited to see him grow. You made a couple guys had tried some different positions. We just saw one walk by the studio a little bit ago on Brody, who looked like he's found a nice home on that defensive line for you. Yeah, I'm a big Brody Tagaloa fan. Um, he plays the he plays the game with a relentlessness. You know, I told I told Terrence uh, Knight and I said, hey, don't don't coach it out of him, man. Like, don't, <laughs> let's not overcoach this guy. He he just has a natural feel. Uh, great D lineman. Um, they have the ability to just kind of change their body. Like they can they can turn sideways. They can raise and lower. And Brody has all that. Um, you know, he he was a guy that was injured. He he wasn't there during the winter program very much. Uh, at least not full. Wasn't there the first part of the spring, but. 
but excited, for, you know, for him. You know, and we moved a couple of tight ends. You know, you move two tight ends to the D line. He and AJ Rollins. You move a wide out to tight end. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it, as a coach, you can sit around and say, "Oh, we don't have this. We don't have that." Sometimes the best place you can look is on your own roster. There's there's guys that can help you, and I'm I'm really proud of this team. They were willing to to try new positions. AJ Rollins, coach, he jumped off at the people at the spring game. Everybody was pretty excited after they saw him with their own eyes. I know you've <laughs> been excited about him. Yeah, you know he he's. Uh, uh, he has the ability as a defensive lineman to always have his feet moving. Um, he, he's a guy to me that, um, you know, he, the sky's the limit. I think he'll leave here as a 270-pound player, 265, 270, as he continues to grow. And so, this, you know, this is like any move. There'll be some highs and some lows. But I was happy that he had some success so that, you know, he can confirm what he already, well, already hopefully knew was that he can do this. Again, folks, the text lines are open for you, 402-413-2400. Greg in Michigan said, Coach, I read today, South Carolina led the nation in pass attempts. Will the Big Red commit to the run? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, anybody's ever seen me coach. Uh, I think when I, when I left from Temple and went to Baylor, people were afraid I was going to, you know, they thought I was a triple option coach. So, um, yeah, and I, I, I'm surprised if South Carolina led the nation in passing attempts. I did not know that. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, no, I, I, I believe in running the football. But I do know this, you know, um, it's our job to make sure we have the ability to run it and throw it, protect. Um, you're going to play, you're going to face games where you might have to run it 50 times to win. You might have to throw it more than you normally do to win. But, you know, we'll be a team that wants to, uh, you know, control the line of scrimmage, be explosive, win the situations. And um, I don't think people will, will have to worry about us not running it enough. You referenced tight ends. First is Fedoni still mad at you, and second, how do you feel about that group? I like the group. Um, I really like some of the young players in that group. You know, I, I mentioned JB. Uh, uh, really like, uh, really like the Borkatures, the Lyndon Myers, and the things that those guys have done. They played a lot of good football for this, for this team. Um, Jake Apple gets a guy that we got here was on defense, moved him over, and didn't wasn't able to play in the spring game, but did a lot of did a lot of uh, good things all spring long. Has great body control, can run so. I think there's good players there. You know, Fedoni's, uh, you know, he's, he's finally healthy. Um, I, as I've seen, you've heard me say, I love his competitiveness, his toughness. I'm excited to get him out there. And um, Eric Gilbert's a guy, you know, a big, you know, 275-pound tight end that can run. So hopefully, uh, we, you know, we can get him uh, cleared and able to play. But uh, we have the guys to do it, plus some guys coming in. So um, it, it, that, that's another position of strength for us. Don't you get excited when a guy's mad that you're holding him back? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't that excite you? Yeah, you know, somewhere along the way in society, like we, we, we acted like playing football. Sometimes we play like playing football is bad. You know, guys opt out of this game, opt out of that game. Like, um, you know, if you love the game, uh, that, that, play. then you want to play. And so I, I appreciate that about him. You know, he, he, I looked out in the spring game, and he was, he was out there rolling. So he, he just wants to be out there. That perfect lead into our next text from, for you. Coach, what led to your decision to go ahead and play a full game and play tackle the entire game? Well, you know, I've, I've never really not tackled in the spring game. I think the one thing that we've added is just tackling the quarterbacks. You know, I hadn't really done that as much. I had done that with, like, the younger players. But an established player like Jeff, you know, maybe I hadn't tackled him as much. Um, but I saw the benefits of it when we did it early. I saw how much faster it was making the quarterbacks play. I, you know, I think in previous years I, I've played uh, close to a full game, you know, uh, depending on the amount of players we had. This is the most guys I've ever had in the spring. Usually I'm in the 70s, you know. Um, because we had more players, we were able to do more. And um, I also felt like because of the work Ed's done on special teams, we needed to play the full special team. So I think for me, and I've said it, um, you know, when you're four and eight, you're four and eight until the next season begins, you know. And so we've got to earn the right uh, to, to, to talk about winning. We've got to earn. So all winter, we were earning the right to enjoy spring ball. All spring ball, we were earning the right to enjoy, you know, the spring game. I wanted to come out of the spring game and, and you know, who are we to, to hold back something? Like, we need to get good. <laughs> we don't need to worry about other teams. We just need to get good. And so playing the spring game for me and playing the full game um, was really important for us to, to heading into this, uh, this fall. So we earned the right to go, you know, f compete to win against Minnesota. Text from Troy says, Coach, what was it like coaching the spring game in Memorial Stadium? And then he, I don't know why he's using this word, but he says, how intimidating is our fan base? I'm not sure that's the right word for our fan base, but you're the well, I think we have a great fan base. So um, uh, uh, hopefully for other teams on, four, on third down, it'll be very intimidating. Um, you know, I, I thought it was just a great outpouring of support. And uh, you, you, you certainly recognize right away how much um, people, people care and people love it. Um, 
you know, sometimes people ask me, oh, Coach, how do you handle the fishbowl of being the head coach in Nebraska football? Let me tell you something. I would take passion over empathy any day. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I live for this, man. I live to be uh, at a place like this, a place like Nebraska, where people care and people deeply care. And so very grateful that everyone came. And, you know, I've said that a bunch of times, but, you know, we, we certainly understand how loyal the fan base has been for a long time and how loyal they were coming to the spring game. And so hopefully people appreciated pretty much everything about the game. You know, obviously there was a, a little bit of a sloppiness now and then, but um, overall I was proud of the guys and the way they worked all spring. I was going to say this for the next segment, but we're, we're there, so let me just go. What, what, did that, what did that mean to you to have Frank Solich come back? To me, in, in knowing Coach the way I do, I, it, he seemed very thrilled and honored to be, to be accepted back here. I think on a personal note, uh, on a personal level, it meant a great deal to me personally, right? You know, I, I was, you know, Tr Trev did all the work, but I was one of the guys asking Coach as well, hey, Coach, you know, please come back. And, um, you know, I certainly don't ever want anything to be about me. You know, I, I want it to be about our players and be about Nebraska. So what could be better in our first spring game together than to have it be something, you know, an iconic moment, you know, in terms of Coach Solich coming back. And hopefully that was something that meant a lot to a lot of people the, the night before. A coach invited me upstairs. You know, we had a, a bunch of his former players there. You know, and I'm taking a picture with Tom Osborne, Frank Solich, Barry Alvarez, and me. I'm like, my goodness, like <laughs> one of these guys doesn't belong, you know. But it was a, it was awesome to see all the former players there and how much how much they meant to Coach Solich. Because in this job, you know, you, you can get the, you can get you can get blinded by the pressure or blinded by the wins and the losses and all these different things. And, and what really matters is the impact you have on people. And so to see the impact Coach Solich had on fans. The night before, to see the impact he had on the former players, um, it was humbling, and it puts things in perspective for me. You know, as I enter into my first year, hey, take care of these players, love these players, appreciate our fans, appreciate the community, and things will work out in the end. In the end, things will work out the way they're supposed to. And soon, you're going to be operating out of the Frank Solich locker room. Yeah. That's a pretty cool deal. It's, it sure is. Uh, you know, I know uh, uh, Coach Solich. Um, uh, you know, he he. It's especially special, you know, him having been the head coach, having been an assistant coach, but most importantly, having been a player, you know, that uh, the, our players are well taken care of and, and his name lives on in, in that room forever. Coach is with us until the top of the hour. One quick question out of our chat room that kind of ties into the tight end. Wants to know if you, when you expect to hear about Eric's waiver uh, for next season. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Don't know? Yeah, it's out, out of my hands. Okay. Compliance question there for <laughs> that we'll keep an eye on. Coach is with us again, 402 413 2400, the number to fire off a text. I see some more coming in. We'll get to those questions for the coach coming up. Time to tell you to buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We got more coming up. Did I forget something? No. Just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time again for some Nebraska farm facts. For Nebraska soybean farmers, sustainability is a way of life. 97% of farms are family owned and 95% are participating in conservation programs and using sustainable practices. And they have significant sustainability goals by 2025, 10% more energy efficiency, 10% less land and 25% less soil erosion. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cenex has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride. Powered locally. 
at Cenex. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Grant Hansen with Campus News. As worldwide leaders in ag technology, UNL faculty and students innovate using emerging technologies to improve yields and nutrition and designing wireless infield networks increasing precision in agriculture. Plus, UNL is breaking ground on a $7.2 million feedlot innovation center near Mead. UNL is doing big things for the future of agriculture. Save time and shop online with Woodhouse. Easily discover your next vehicle while shopping for a new or new to you car, truck, or SUV. Woodhouse has something for everyone, offering 19 of the top name brands in new and an extensive pre-owned inventory. You're guaranteed to find that spacious, family-friendly SUV or that get any job done truck. So get started today at woodhouse.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp back with you. The head football coach, Matt Rural, with us until the top of the hour, wrapping up spring ball. Huskers now getting ready to take some final exams here in a week or so, and then a little bit, of, I guess a little bit of a break, right, before you bring them back for the summer conditioning play? Yeah, we'll, we'll start up again uh, May 30th, um, the day after, I guess that's the day after uh, – Memorial, Memorial Day. Day, so so we'll get a little break there, and then hopefully a little break around July fourth. That's that's important, isn't it, for kids to kind of disconnect for a little while and kind of recharge the batteries. I think a hundred percent, especially with what we're asking them to do. You know, they're, you know, we're we're not like a, uh, you know, uh, there, there, there's a lot we ask them to do. I should just say it like that. Like we have them at six a.m. We have them, you know, work, and we have them in the afternoons for study hall, evenings for study hall. So they worked hard, and so they deserve a chance to kind of get away, see their families. See their loved ones. You know, some guys are from right here. Some guys are from further away. Um, because when we come back, we want them to be recharged and, and ready to go this June. I do want to correct Greg in, in Michigan on his text. South Carolina was nowhere near leading the country in passing attempts. So we do kind of want to clarify that out there. How's it been kind of getting the group back together 
uh, most of these guys you've coached with for quite a while. How, how's it been the last six months, kind of getting getting the band back together, so to speak? <laughs> well, it's it's been it's been really uh, fun, and I'm very grateful um, uh, to Trev that he, he allowed me to hire the staff the way I did. I think we have 13, 12 or 13 of, of my former players in some role in the weight room and recruiting and player development. Um, you know, you have to have you have to have uh, uh, consistency on your staff, and you have to have you know, as Trev always says, a unity of purpose. And, you know, it's one thing to buy into something. It's another thing to believe in it. The way that we do things, the commitment we have to not just on the field but off the field, all of these guys believe in. And so it's been fun. A lot of them now are getting – they're younger than me, obviously, as former players. So I'm going from being, like, the younger head coach to being the older guy, and that's, that's not always fun. But, um, but it's good. And it's, it's good to know that, you know, when I leave, um, if I have to go away and do something, if I have to step out of a meeting – that I have people there that I trust to, to work at a really high level and work hard. And most importantly, to wake up every single day saying, hey, how do I improve these players' lives? How, you know, how do, I, how do I pour into these players' lives? You know, we talk about the transfer portal. We talk about all this other stuff. At the end of the day, this is still the same. This is still the same thing. It's about helping young people have better lives. And that's what uh, Coach Solich did. Uh, that's what Coach Paterno did for me. And that's what we're trying to do for these guys and uh, uh, the staff. Is so important to that, you know, as, as we hire staff and people are talking about the impact on recruiting, the imp impact people's lives. And I promise you the recruiting and the football will all take care of itself. Coach White's maybe not been as part of the biggest part of your circle. You've known him from the past. How's it been to kind of have him and you, you both have said you're bouncing his stuff off each other and it's been really good. What, let's talk a little bit about Coach White. Well, first of all, Tony's, uh, Tony's really smart. And so, um, he has a system that allows him to think on his feet and attack offenses. And what I like about him is because he's, he's smart, because he's always thinking, he doesn't live in a world of this is what I've always done. Um, that's the, the number one recipe to not be successful is to say, well, this is what we've always done. He's always looking for uh, a better way to do things. He's always in the search of better. And so that's been fun for me because I can, A, go back and look at what he's done, but B, also say, hey, you know, we ran this blitz. Hey, we did this. It takes a really strong person to walk into a staff with three assistant coaches out of the four on defense who are linked to me, who played and coached for me, and for him to just be a coordinator walking with a whole new staff. But he's that good. And um, I think he commands the room. I think he commands the players. I think the players believe in, in him. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. And, and, and I think you know we'll, we'll build a defense that's not Tony White's defense, it's not Matt Rule's defense, but that's Nebraska's defense. And I completely trust him to lead that. Very good. Hey, First Interstate Bank, built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com, member FDIC. Cole in our YouTube chat room says, Coach, I want to know what went into the, the grass practice field decision, and do you want the stadium someday to be grass? Yeah, it's, I mean, just, you know, I, in Carolina, we went, from, we went from grass to turf. And... Um, in the course of that, you know, as the NFLPA comes in and people come in, you learn a lot, right? And so I know some people will debate this, but as a base rule, you know, injuries are higher on turf than on grass. And when I came here, there had been, I mean, there had been a rash of knee injuries going into this season, right? There had been, I think, a bunch of ACLs over the last six years, a bunch of meniscuses. So football's a violent game, but, you know, we already have turf in the indoor. Um, I, I wanted to put grass outside because I believe it's safer. And... Um, you know, we're going to work on there every day. We're going to be on there every day. When I was at Baylor, we had two grass practice fields. At Temple, we had a turf field. You make do with what you have, but we had the opportunity to do it, and so now we'll have two turf areas, two grass areas, and a stadium. In terms of the, the long term, you know, I'd, I'd have to get on into Memorial you know, the Stadium and start to really feel uh, what it feels like and be out there before I can make, some, make a statement. But I just feel like um, one of my jobs is to give the guys the healthiest, the healthiest surface and the healthiest uh, – um, uh, operation possible. Josh in Omaha for you, Coach, said the Big Ten known for running the football, some really good backs you're going to face this fall in Michigan and Wisconsin. How do you feel like your team is going to be stopping the run, especially with as many young guys as you have on the line? Um, we're going to have to stop it. <laughs> you know, uh, no I'm not a big, I'm not great at predicting the future. You know, um, I also, you know, and, and I'm, I'm always focused on in the moment, but I'm always planning for the future. And so, um, I think the, the biggest way you don't grow your program is when you um, aren't developing young players. And so uh, if the young players see themselves as young, then they'll have a built-in excuse. We don't, we don't have excuses. We don't make excuses at all. 
Uh, so I expect our guys to go out and play like Huskers. You know, that, that's, that's, all, that's all that it is. I expect them to run to the ball and get off blocks and tackle and, and play with uh, a, a relentlessness and a physicality that stops the run. Michigan, and, uh, Michigan is a great team, and they've been a great team. Not, not many people have stopped the run against them. But it's an opportunity for us, you know, to measure ourselves against the best. So uh, the whole, but the young player thing, I, you know, they won't hear me say that to them very often. Um, they, uh, if they want to put that in on, they want to they wear that helmet, they want to walk out there and play in that stadium, then there's a standard. And um, I think the thing for us is we have to establish what our standard is going to be and then reestablish it each and every week. So those young guys played really well in the spring game. You didn't have Ty Robinson this spring. Just talk about that defensive front. What did you see and where, where do you think they, they can go in the next six months? Um, well, first of all, speaking about Ty, when I got here, he, you know, he was, he, he's a pretty special player. And, um, you know, I think he's a guy that this defense allows him to have the versatility. You know, he can be a zero nose. He can be a three technique. He can be a five technique. And so um, as, as guys look at like, hey, how do I expand my, my NFL um, uh, options when they're done? And, and, you know, showing that versatility, I think is really important. So Ty's a guy that we're expecting to be a leader and be, and be a really good player on our defense. I thought Nash was, was, was really special all spring. And as you said, there's a bunch of young guys that we know can play. And so uh, we need the older players, the Blaze Gunnarsons, all those guys. We need them to lead those young guys, those guys, young guys to come along. And uh, we'll play a lot of guys on defense. And we'll play a lot of guys on the defensive line and try to just keep throwing waves at people. We'll get better as the year goes on and hopefully um, hit our stride, hope, hopefully against the, on the 31st. Yeah. But just keep working to, to be one of those teams that gets better and better and better and better. Linebackers, the two leading tacklers from last year didn't play in the spring game. You had to be careful with them with injury situations and Luke and Nick. How about that part of your defense, that middle core of that defense? Yeah, I'd say John, John Bullock was one of the best players on our team this spring. Um, and the John Bullock's, a, you know, I think he's a starting caliber player. I think he's a guy that will have a future hopefully at the next level. And so making that move for him from safety to linebacker, I think unlocked a whole future. And, uh, you know, you saw some glimpses of MJ Sherman and Jamari Butler and, you know, Chief Borders and, you know, Garrett Snodgrass. We, we have a lot of guys out there that I know can go out there and play. And um, Makai's another young player that, you know, so I don't want mean to signal anybody out or forget anybody, but uh, there, there's going to be a lot of competition at linebacker uh, heading into the fall. And I think the way that we practice um, will give guys an opportunity to show what they can do. You mentioned running back, maybe the deepest position on the team. Evan Cooper may go, Coach, it's my room. That <laughs> defensive back, you had a, well, one, you got a ton of guys back there. How competitive was that during spring? I thought it was good. You know, uh, you have a couple guys that are really established. You know, the Quentin Newsom. Um, you know, to me, Malcolm Hartsog is, is why you get into coaching. You know, the guy, he went student, you know, he went student athlete of the year at the, at the lead, at night at the lead award. Um, he's an excellent student. He's great in the weight room, takes care of himself. Uh, on and off the field, played really well last year. So I think we have some, some really good pieces like that. You know, I think there'll be a lot of competition. Um, but, you know, competition is good. And competition breeds confidence. It breeds success. And so uh, the summer will be important for those guys. Then we'll get in the season. And it'll take, it's going to take more than just a couple guys, too. Uh, you know, we, like every team, we'll have some guys get banged up. We'll have some injuries. Um, I'm not working in one-year cycles. You know, I'm always I'm, – I'm, I'm trying to do this thing the right way for the long term. And so uh, those young players and those older players, just get them on the field, let them develop, and I think we can have a really good defense for a, a long time. Coach Cooper thinks he's got a couple of NFL guys. Yeah, Qu Quentin, Quentin's an NFL player. We, we, got, we have NFL players in there. I think it's uh, – we, we just have to get them to play to their potential here in college. And that's, uh, and that's the biggest thing is – Letting them know, hey, this is, we, we see the potential. You know, we have a vision for what you can be, but this is the expectation and the standard for how we expect you to play now. And the best way to play in the NFL is to play really good in college. Yeah. And um, um, you know, I, sometimes guys don't believe that. They think, well, I'm going to go run fast at the combine. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I've sat in those rooms. You know, like they, they look at your film. They don't look at how many catches you had. They look at your film. And so, getting our guys to to play at the highest level uh, so that they generate a lot of interest and then. We play, we play uh, Nebraska defense. Very good. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to fire off a text for the coach. Our hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands, a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. More with the coach coming up. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. 
But how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. UNL is the only Big Ten university in Nebraska, part of the only conference with an academic alliance. Being in the Big Ten means superior academics, unique student opportunities, better resources, and world-class research programs. With 72% of undergraduate students receiving scholarships or financial aid, UNL offers a Big Ten education at great value. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling. His favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota. 
the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Head coach with us till the top of the hour. Hour two will be Will Bolt's radio show. You know, baseball, they've been so into analytics for years. I know football's kind of going that direction a little bit. How much do you use that type of thing? And have you added that in the last seven, eight, nine years of your coaching yeah, I think going back to Temple, you know, we utilize some outside uh, companies to help us uh, with, with, with in-game analytics. Um, so that, that's everything from when to go for two and when not to, to, you know, when to, when to go for it, um, when to kick an onside kick. And, you know, I think there's a lot that goes into that, right? There's, there's sort of like the, hey, the purely mathematical analytic model of, hey, this is the best thing to do versus the feeling of the game. So we've tried to, you know, build that over the years. Um, to, to comp, let those things complement each other, get that information, but also still go with what we think, you know, our guys will do best. And then we try to build analytics into like recruiting. Um, you know, uh, this, this, this is the type of person we're looking for. These are the numbers we're looking for. These are the traits that we're looking for and to build profiles. So that's something that you do a lot in the NFL. I think there's a room for it in colleges. We're trying to look at, you know, younger, younger, younger players and see how we think they'll develop. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really always in, 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 into analytics, and I think it's a tremendous tool. How, how do you balance that, giving them a, enough information but not overloading them? Is that a tough balance the player, to make with the players? players? Yeah, a lot of it we don't really – I mean, we don't really have to share a lot with them. It's really more talking to them. I, I do think that, you know, sometimes you'll explain to them, like – I'll give you an example. There's always a big debate. You know, if you're, if you're down by 14 points, that's in the fourth quarter, and you score a touchdown, you know, should you go for two or not? And for 100 years, it was don't go for two, you know, you know, kick the extra point, make it a seven-point game, score again, kick the extra point, and go into overtime. Um, whereas a lot of people in analytics will say, hey, if you score, go for two the first time. Um, if you get it, now when you score, you kick the extra point, you're winning by one. If you don't get it, now when you score the second time, you go for two. That makes a ton of sense. But on the football field, if you don't get that first one, you can sometimes feel your whole team like, the letdown and the, so it's it's teaching the guys that hey if we do do this here's why if we don't get the first one don't panic don't start you know looking up why you know just just score again so I, I think there's a, a educational process in terms of situational football that we try to do a nice job of um, but but there's never a clear answer for anything because at, at the end of the day you still have to go make the plays Cole in our chat room wants to know from you coach uh, you know do you want to be known as have an identity for your football team and if so what would that be yeah, we want to be a tough, hard-working, competitive team. Um, you know, uh, not, nothing more, nothing less. I mean, you know, um, it's a tough game. Sometimes the ball bounces the right way or the wrong way. But, you know, being tough, you know, getting, getting the job done no matter what the circumstances are, uh, being hardworking, always doing extra, and being competitive, you know, fighting to be the best at everything that you do, uh, I think those things, they don't require talent, uh, but they do require commitment. And so... If we're, those, if we're those three things, then um, the football, the X's and O's, the, the technique, I think it'll, it'll take care of itself. Text in for you, Coach. What's your thoughts about the offensive line coming out of spring ball? Yeah, I like the offensive line. I think, um, I think they suit us really well. They're going to be good for what we do. I think we have to continue to develop depth. Um, I think we have to continue to develop the young players. But uh, I like the group. I like the walk-on players that we have on that, in that group as well. And um, I think they'll, they'll play well for us. You know, uh, Sat... It's one of the reasons why I made Sat coach the offensive line at Carolina. He'd be assistant or line coach. Um, you can call plays all day. Calling plays in college football is not like call, playing Madden. You know, like 
like you, you have to take the, uh, the matchups into account. And so, you know, we have to do a good job of, of balancing our run pass, balancing, you know, helping guys versus great players. But I think, I think Donovan Rayola does a tremendous job. Uh, Aaron Cooling does a great job as his assistant. And uh, the players, it, I'll just tell Cornhusker fans this because I talk a lot about the O-line. There is no other position on our, on our team more bought in to being a Nebraska Cornhusker than those O-linemen. Uh, they, they work at a level I've never seen a group work at. So I hope everyone's rooting for them because they deeply, deeply care and they deeply want to make everyone proud. They deeply want to honor the, the legacy of the pipeline. Um, they cannot be working harder at it. So if there's a reason why I won't take shots at them, it's because I honor people's work. I see how hard they work. I see how much they care. Their passion motivates me, and everyone should be rooting for our offensive line to play really well this year. They're always together. Those guys, you never see one without like five or six of them. I've never seen a group. I've never seen a position group that has a higher standard for each other and holds each other more accountable and spends more time together and works harder at the game than our offensive linemen. And that's why I just I hope I hope everyone, you know, through hard times and good times, right, I hope everyone is rooting for them um, because they are desperately trying uh, to, to play at a level that allows us to go win at a high level. Very good. 402-413-2400. Still time if you want to slip a text in. We need to get our final break of the hour and back with some final thoughts from the coach next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Looking for a car buying experience tailored to you? Start with Woodhouse, a trusted partner for automotive needs and a proud member of the Nebraska community. With 18 brands and 21 sales and service locations, our dedicated Woodhouse team is ready to provide you a convenient and seamless transaction from anywhere. Whether purchasing, selling, or servicing, experience the difference with Woodhouse, the official auto dealer of Nebraska Athletics. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Since 1993, Dakota Mac has offered fixed long-term ag real estate loans perfect for any stage of life. The rebellious 15-year loan. The here for laundry 20-year loan and the 30-year loan who thinks they can tell you a thing or two about parenting. Whatever your needs, trust Dakota Mac with your legacy. Hi, it's Nick Reno from Dakota Mac. Please call me at 308-380-7564 to learn all about our competitive rates on ag real estate loans. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Final few minutes with the head coach. Still time if you want to fire off a text for us, 402-413-2400. That is our Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. When do you, and maybe you already have, start scouting the teams you're going to be playing in the fall? Yeah, we, we've started. Um, we, you know, we, we really started right when we got here. I think it's really important to figure out, hey, what's the key to winning in the, in the Big Ten? Um, you know, so you have some teams like Colorado that has a new staff, and so you're pulling things from a bunch of different places, and you know, probably won't have a true picture until the fall. But uh, t teams like Minnesota uh, that have been there for a while, um, you know, I, I try to watch a little bit of those teams every day. 
just so they're constantly, you know, you know, in, in your brain. And uh, as you make decisions right now, you're doing those with the context of, hey, what's going to work or what's going to be appropriate in the fall. So uh, that's the fun part of the job. It's the football, and you know, we like to do it. College football is about ready to expand the playoff. Are you a fan of that? Your thoughts about that? And then this conference is about to expand from coast to coast with the two L.A. schools coming in. Your thoughts about those things? Yeah, you know, I, I love competition. I love football. I'm a guy that, you know, in, in, at Penn State in, you know, 19, uh, you know, 94, you know, um, we, we didn't have a chance to play against right. University of Nebraska. Like, that, you know, what a great game that would have been, these two undefeated teams. And so the BCS, while people complained about it, I was always like, well, it's better than what I experienced. And, you know, the college football playoffs are better than the BCS. So – I'd love to settle it on the field. And, um, you know, I think as we move forward, the Big Ten will probably get three teams in every year, maybe, you know, four. Uh, I think if you could be a team that, you know, is getting better and peaks at the end of the year, if, you, if you're a team that can play in the elements, you know, I think if you win your conference, if you win the Big Ten, you'll probably get a bye. But mm -hmm. if you come in second, you'll probably get a home game. And I'd, I'd love to see people come out here and play, you know, in, in the wintertime uh, in, in Memorial Stadium. So um, that's uh, – I'm a big fan of all that. I think I'd rather just settle it on the field than let computers decide. We were talking about this during one of the breaks. Right now, you've got a signing day, kind of right in the middle of what would be the first round of the playoffs, starting in 2024. Where do you want that to go? Do you want that? That has to move, right? That's kind of a disadvantage for those teams that are getting lined up, ready to play. You know, I, I hadn't really thought about it until you brought it up. You know, I, uh, um, I think I think if you're winning that much, you probably feel pretty good about a lot of things. But to your point. Uh, even right now, when you're in a bowl game, if you're playing in the January bowl game, you're still dealing with the December signing date. So I know there's a lot of people trying to figure it out. And I'm one of those, those guys, I recognize that there's a lot of moving parts, right? You, you make one change that positively affects one thing, but it has a negative uh, you know, ramification somewhere else. So um, you know, I, I just try to make sure I, I, I stay very locked in on you know, what can I control and, and, and whatever the rules are, hey, tell me what the rules are and let's, let's go try to win with them. So, but uh, I, think, I think a lot of things probably have to be looked at. You're knee-deep into the recruiting cycle right now. Talk about the, the group that you have that's dedicated to that, ab ab beyond your full-time assistant coaches. But you've got a really group, hard-working group of guys and gals who work on that every day. Yeah, you know, we, we, we're blessed, you know, to have uh, an a, a excellent recruiting department. And, um, you know, they vet uh, not only just the tape and the talent, but also the traits. They, they, they vet the academics, they vet the character, and, and uh, they build relationships with people. And to me, it's about getting the right kids. Um, lots of guys are really good recruits, but they not, might not be really good players. Lots of guys are, are great recruits and great players. And so it's, for us, it's about finding the right fit and people that fit what we do and how we do it. They need, they need, to, be, they need to be corn huskers. And so um, we have, a, as you said, a great group, you know, and uh, they work at it a lot. It takes a lot of time. But um, I'm grateful to them and, and think uh, each year you'll just see our recruiting just evolve as, as the recruiting trends and rules change, but always stay at a high level. Some really good people, Coach. They really are. Uh, one buddy, we got a text in uh, making sure you're okay sharing your stadium with a volleyball team in August. You okay letting them have it for a oh, night? Oh, man, I, I'm, I'm really upset about the whole thing. Honestly, I know I am. I'm really upset about the whole thing because I don't get to be there. I know. Gonna be, we will be all I mean, like, th 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 those young ladies are amongst my favorite athletes. One of the great things about this job is I get to walk around and I get to, I get to see people. I mean, see the athletes on our teams and, and these, all these kids for all these programs. They're, they're wonderful, wonderful young people. And those girls are no exception. So I'd love to be there. I'd love to see that. I'd love to experience that. Um, I went to the rodeo the other night with Coach Cook. We're out of time. Oh, gosh. Awesome. Thank you. There you go. Coach Rule. See Rule. you guys. <laughs> Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. 
Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic.
This is the Husker Baseball Show on the Huskers Radio Network with head coach Will Bolt. Presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. And again, the 1 0. Karen swings and crushes one in the air to left field. Marilla back to the track, to the wall. It is gone. Josh Karen gets one out of here. A three run blast to left field. 17 to nothing, Cornhuskers. He comes set at the belt. Now kicks and deals the pitch. Strike three called. Painted the inside corner for another strikeout. His sixth, seventh zero on the board for the junior right-hander. Gordon's pitch. Drill to left field. Hit pretty well. Cam Frederick going back to the warning track, looking up, and it is gone. Home run, Dylan Carey. Huskers have taken a 3-0 lead. One and one to Calarco. The pitch. Hot shot third. Nice pick by Carey to second for one. On to first. In time. Double play. Slick. Fielding play by Dylan Carey at third base. Here's the one-two. Drilled into center field. That's hit a long way. Going back is Lambros, and it is gone. Home run, Griffin Everett. A grand slam, and the Huskers lead it 5 to nothing. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thanks, and welcome back. Hour number two of Sports On. I hope you enjoyed last hour hearing from the head football coach, kind of wrapping up spring football. The Huskers now into their uh, spring, uh, second part of the spring phase, this weight training Final exams coming up in a week, and then they'll break for a few weeks before coming back for summer conditioning. Now it's our baseball show. Head coach Will Bolt with us. Huskers coming off of a weekend series loss to Maryland. You won the middle, middle game, and then yesterday just got sideways. And as Ben and I said on the broadcast, we've been on the other side of that twice this year with Minnesota and Northwestern. It's not a lot of fun, but it just uh, it was one of those days where the guys couldn't find a strike zone. Yeah, that yesterday's game, it, it was an interesting one. Um, we didn't play poorly. We just didn't pitch well. Uh, and I know pitching is part of playing, but it, you know it's not one of those games where we were just sloppy, you know, defensively and just. Um, I mean, we got ahead. I mean, it's crazy to think we were ahead, and I think it was the third or fourth inning of that yep. game. Um, I was proud of the way that we came out all weekend. You know, we started fast, and um, you know they robbed you know Matthews of a probably a sure double there in that first inning of, of that game, and didn't score in the first. Got the zero. We scored two. We just weren't able to get those shutdown innings. That, that's been a little bit elusive for us um, this year when we score, just going right back out there. And, you know, when the other team kind of has the, the heightened sense of awareness to get back in the game, to go get those zeros. And that's kind of what happened, you know, in that game. Um, they were barreling some balls up with Walsh. And, you know, usually with him, you can kind of tell pretty quick, like if the team's got to – you know, they're going to be out front and they're, they are you know, don't have a great approach going. Then he's got a chance to get on a roll. Um, felt like they were pretty dialed in um, after that first inning. Really felt like the best chance we had was to try to keep them seeing different arms throughout the game. And that obviously backfired. We, we just weren't able to get any stops um, out of the pen. Uh, I think 11 walks and a hit batter in there as well. Uh, man, they're a really good offensive team, but when you give a team that many free chances, uh, you know, that's a recipe for, for getting your butt whooped. Well, and you haven't been a team. We, we pointed this out on our broadcast as well. You, you have the lowest number of walks in the Big Ten Conference, so it's not really like that's been an issue with this pitching staff. But you also didn't get very long starts. It, and Emmett left with the, the shot off of the leg, and it looks like he's going to be okay, which is good. Jace didn't last real long, and, and Will only got you into the third. Yeah, and, you know, the, it was a wonderful game on Saturday, very, very competitive back and forth. And, um, you know, we had <clears throat> the difference in that game, it really played into Sunday, honestly, because we had a five-run lead, you know, five to zero right off the bat. Yeah. Then they score two to get back in it. Then we take another five-run lead, you know, and, and they creep back in it. So, so Shea had to be in the game far longer than we really wanted, you know, to happen. Um, and he pitched great. And he gave us the, the, the best shot to win. And, and, and we, we won that game. But it hurt us for the next day, you know, because we didn't have Shea available. He's been our most reliable reliever. Um, and, you know, just that's how weekends kind of set up. If you can get a good start on Friday – you don't have to go to the bullpen quite as early. And Hawkins threw a bunch of pitches on Friday. Um, and he would have been available to come back had the game been in balance on Sunday. Um, but, you know, you, to get on the right side of those series against really good teams, like you said, you gotta have you got to have better starting pitching. And um, Emmett battled, but, you know, we would have hoped for a six or seven inning start from him and we could save the bullpen. And then we needed Jace to, to respond on Saturday. And, um, you know, he kept it together enough to, to, to keep the lead. 
Um, but they were uh, extending at bats off him, and man, the ball was just flying out of the ballpark. Give us an update on on Emmett. Where, how is he? He was walking around yesterday, which looked like a good sign. Yeah, honestly, I think he felt like, and I think we all pretty much felt like he had a broken foot on Friday night. I mean, it was really, really swollen and, and black and blue, and um, he could not put any weight on it whatsoever. Um, and he's a warrior. He he wants to pitch through everything. And when he told me, he's like, Coach, I can't put weight on my foot. Pretty, pretty concerned there. Um, so he, he went and got an x-ray on Saturday morning. Um, our, our folks here took a look at it. No break. So um, just a bone bruise. He was actually able to play catch um, a little bit on Sunday. Uh, tomorrow would be his bullpen day. Um, so a little bit's going to be determined there as far as, you know, how much weight he can put on it. Can he actually – um, I think it's his left foot, um, so his back foot, you know, as a left-handed pitcher. So um, it's just going to kind of depend on how his bullpen session goes tomorrow uh, to figure out, you know, is he going to be available this weekend? Is it going to be a deal where we're going to have to push him back a day or two? Um, or is he going to be fine, you know, to go as is? So it's just going to be, at this point, obviously kind of a pain tolerance deal because there's nothing, you know, structurally wrong or there's no break there. As you mentioned, offensively, you got the lead all three games. You Max had a really good weekend. I mean, and, and that seems redundant, but we shouldn't take it for granted. He's just putting together an amazing season and career, really. He's now up to number eight all-time in home runs for the Oscars. But you really had some good swings throughout the we weekend did. from your offense. We did, it, yeah. And it, like I said, that, that ballpark is very offensive. Like, you feel like you get rewarded for staying in the middle of the field because it's, you yeah. know, the ball flies there. Um, but, yeah, we had good at-bats. Um, I, like I said, I mean, we came out and, and, and scored first in all three of those games, which is something that we haven't done a great job of um, at times this year. So that was a good sign. Um, it was a good sign to see some guys up and down the lineup have some big hits for us. Um, you know, we, we, we drove some balls and, and um, you know, even a lot of our outs were, were productive or, you know, hard contact. Um, and, and there weren't, you know, the high strikeout numbers that we've had at times as well. I don't know who Casey Burnham made mad, but my goodness, his Friday night at bats, he had a couple taken away from him. One pulled back into the ballpark that should have been a home run, had one caught up against the wall. He also hit a shot down the third baseline at their third baseman. I mean, he... He got robbed of about three, would have been extra bases, and in one case, a home run. Yeah, he did. I mean, the play in center field was a surefire home run. I mean, it, it, he literally climbed the wall, timed it perfectly, um, and jumped over and got his arm over the wall and, and you know, saved, saved a home run there. You know, and then the, the double, he hasn't hit that ball all year directly down the third base line, you know, on the ground. So uh, for their third baseman to kind of be – he really wasn't in position. I mean, he had a dive – backwards basically to to stop that ball amazing play to get up and throw out you know a guy like Casey with his speed too so yeah thought he he's had really good at bats and um <clears throat> what I've liked about Casey here recently um you're starting to see that walk to strikeout be one to one is where you want it to be especially for a table setter where um I think it's actually over one to one walk hit by pitch to, to strike out for the last 10 games so that's uh Certainly a good sign, and, and for him to have, you know, his best at-bats here towards the end of the year. You know, you said it after the game Friday night. They made some plays. I mean, yeah. the, both, a lot of them were on Casey, although I think Anglem hit one that the center fielder yeah. came in and do yep. as well. And then Saturday, the Huskers made the play. A huge double play in the eighth inning, and that, that's usually the difference when you have two pretty comparable teams. One going to make a player two more than the other yeah, one. Yeah, and the, the winning team is almost always making those winning plays, you know, and uh, we had an opportunity on Friday to get off the field and make one of those winning plays and ended up being a three-run, you know, clearing, bases clearing error. Um, so, yeah, and like I said, and we turned around, like you said, uh, Shea on the mound in the eighth inning, huge double play. A ball hit hard in the six hole. Dylan ranged to his left, threw a strike, and, and Max with a quick turn at second base and um, made some good plays there. To, and that, you know, that we were on the right side of those and we won that game. Um, and uh, yeah, so there, there's some of those 50-50 plays. Even on even on Sunday, it got a little lopsided, but there were some of those 50-50 plays in there as well that, you know, we just just out of our reach. You know, here, you know, that ball kind of falls in there. Uh, we did catch a break with 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 Dylan's ball there in the in the first or second Indeed. inning, I guess. Where dropped in, but he put the ball in play with two strikes. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's a difference too. Is just moving the baseball and making something happen. So, yep. Yeah. 
You can't say it, but I will. There were also some 50-50 pitches that maybe didn't <laughs> quite get called quite right as well. I wanted to ask you this. I meant to ask you this on our pregame show yesterday. Their leadoff batter, Schlieger, really crowds the plate. In fact, <clears throat> his, his feet are on the, the, the chalk line in the left-handed batter's box. What are the rules on that, and, and what, it, how do you, what do you see when you see him, the way he lines up to attack a pitch? Yeah, I mean, and seeing it on film, his elbows hang over the plate. I mean, it, it's, a, it's one of those deals where if he starts to move the bat to check swing, um, his back elbow is, is over the plate. It's, Which is a strike. Could be. Should be. You yeah. know, should, should be a strike. Um, and it makes it impossible to throw the ball inside on him because it's, like I said, I mean, you are you throw a, a strike inside corner when he's standing on top of the plate like that, it, it's got a chance to hit him. And I felt like it did, at, you know, at least once this weekend. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, you really, your foot, it just can't be out of the batter's box completely. So you can be on the yeah. lines, can't be yeah. inside the line. Yeah, so, but, but technically, you know, you have to either make an attempt to get out of the way or if you can't, you, you, the ball has to hit you in the batter's box for you, you know, to be able to get the base and no replay, you know, it just it's kind of one of those things. But he's got a ton of hit by pitch. I mean, it's just he's, he's all over. He's all over the plate, and he's a heck of a hitter, too. He's a good player, yeah. really good player. But, yeah, I just don't know that I've ever seen anybody that crowds it as much as he did, and it's really obvious. And a lot of the people that were at the game, particularly cheering for the Huskers, were certainly yelling and screaming about it. So I'm glad you clarified that for yeah. me. I didn't quite know what the rule was yep. on that. But I'm sure, I'm sure umpires have been – they've probably discussed that his whole career. I think he's done it his whole career. Yeah, and it was something that uh, Josh made the umpire aware of before the game, just, hey, just make sure, <laughs> you know, you're, you're watching this. So, um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. All right, uh, Brandon in Omaha says, Coach, the, the, the resume game tomorrow against Creighton, Shea was in the game in April when that thing got stopped. Is he going to be able to throw tomorrow? Uh, we'll find out tomorrow uh, when we get there and he starts playing catch. I mean, Shea's a guy, I can tell you this, he wants to pitch. <laughs> so it's just he threw a ton on Saturday. Um, he bounces back as good as any pitcher we've, I've ever had. Um, and he's going to want to pitch, and it's just going to be a matter of how much and, um, and if he feels good. I, I'm not going to push it if he doesn't, if he's for even a, just a second says, hey, I'm a little sore today. He's very rarely ever sore. So... I would be a little bit surprised. So it remains to be seen at this point whether he he remains in that game um, or we have to go in another direction there. And if anybody has already appeared in that game, they can't come back in. Right, right? yeah. So I think Buns and Hawkins have already pitched. Yeah, Buns, Hawkins, Garza, and then Perry obviously had started the game. So those guys are already out of the game. Shea is currently in the game. So depending on what happens there, because he's already thrown to a hitter in that game, he doesn't have to stay in. Uh, is the difference in their pitcher that's coming into the game as the game got canceled uh, or postponed, he has to pitch to at least one hitter. Okay. So because he wasn't – he hadn't thrown a, a pitch yet. So Very good. Starts at 5 o'clock tomorrow night for that. Then the regularly scheduled game is at 7, barring the first game being over uh, by that time. All right, 402-413-2400. That's the number if you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text. It's our Sports Honey Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop – your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. More with the coach coming up. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane. Servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. The Nebraska Lottery has given over $900 million back to our state since 1993. The proceeds have helped protect and improve Nebraska's environment, funded need-based scholarships for Nebraska students, and maintained and improved facilities at the State Fair. That's terrific! You should put that on your website. It already is. Just click on beneficiaries in the menu. Menu? You guys serve food, too? Maybe you should get off your feet for a while. The Nebraska Lottery. 30 years of building a better Nebraska. The 3-2 to Swanson. Gabe swings and drills one in the air to center. Backing up is Kaplan. He's to the track. He's to the wall. It is gone. It's a three-run shot for Swanson. 
Tune in tomorrow with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin as Nebraska baseball takes on Creighton. The Huskers and Blue Jays wrap up Game 2 of their series at 5 p.m. and pregame coverage for Game 3 is set for 6.30 p.m. on the HRN. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red! Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynics has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cynics your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cynics station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cynics. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. When you're a fan, you wear your team's jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. After a win, your world glistens. Lose and the hurt permeates your soul. You'll always have a place with us in the Cox Fan Zone, where everyone can play and connect with other fans in a big group hug. See, in the Fan Zone, you're not some crazy fan. You're home. Hey, Husker fans, this is Greg Sharp, voice of the Huskers. Say Fan Zone into your Contour Voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit cox.com slash fan zone. Go Huskers! It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe, I think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging. I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knucklehead. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Save time and shop online with Woodhouse. Easily discover your next vehicle while shopping for a new or new to you car, truck, or SUV. Woodhouse has something for everyone, offering 19 of the top name brands in new and an extensive pre-owned inventory. You're guaranteed to find that spacious, family-friendly SUV or that get any job done truck. So get started today at woodhouse.com. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Will Bolt with us, our baseball show for the week, 402-413-2400, the number to dot us up with a comment or question, or you can fire off a text. Huskers coming off of a tough series in Maryland against the Terps. They're now nationally ranked. They, they certainly have their eyes set 
on hosting a regional. And there are a lot of ingredients that you like about that team. For your team, two weekends left in the league race, and I know you're right now focused on making sure you get in that tournament in Omaha. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I'm, we're focused on just making sure that um, you know we got to get the pitching in order, you know, yeah. it, to get that to get that lined up. Um, and like you said, it, it starts with with Friday night and, and having a, a good start there. And, and we've we've seen some good performances from Hawkins now. I mean, he's he's been a guy that's been pretty steady for us. Um, you know, we need. We need some of those veteran pitchers to, to step up for us. It looked like they were trending in that direction. Um, last week was a little bit of a tough week that way. Um, but, yeah, we, we need to kind of solidify some of those spots and then get into the tournament in Omaha. You're going to have to have those pitching performances to, you know, to carry you maybe. Uh, maybe some guys stepping up that haven't had a ton of opportunities throughout the year, um, you know, stepping up and, and, and making a huge impact. Um, because you know, no better time than now to, to get that in line. And there was a time, you know, not too long ago that we felt like we had those roles pretty well solidified, and those starting pitchers were rolling. And and um, so it would be great to to get back to that. Ben and I, I want your thoughts on this. Ben and I brought this up yesterday during the broadcast. The Big Ten, unlike the Big Twelve, does not have a run rule on getaway day. Yeah. The SEC this year went to run rules for <clears throat> every conference game. Where do you come down on that, and do you see that having some momentum? As I said, we've been on the other side of it with Northwestern and Minnesota, and then yesterday we were on the, unfortunately, the downside of that. Yeah. Where do you fall on that? Oh, I think there needs to be one. I, I'm a big proponent of a run rule. Um, I think it's just, you know, the game gets a certain point, and, you know, neither team, you realize that you're probably not going to get back in the game. Yeah. And now, you know, I think 10 after 7 is obviously, I mean, it's a pretty good indication of that one team has dominated the other team up to that point. So, Would you want it for every conference game or just a getaway um, I would probably err on the side of just having it um, on getaway day. Yeah, I think it makes sense on getaway day. Um, you know, having to play nine full innings for the first couple of days, I think, you know, you reward the team that plays really well and they have to use more pitchers. Even, Albeit they're probably not throwing their high leverage guys, but um, yeah, I would, and I wouldn't be totally against it for for all three. But I think it's a, definitely something that needs to be looked into, um, doing it on getaway day for sure. Well, everybody's trying to race to an airport. In most right. cases, you're racing to an airport. You're trying to catch a flight. They, it just yeah. would alleviate some stress if the game's yeah. decided. Yeah, I 100 yeah. percent agree. With Is that, that something the coaches have to? push through is that something yeah. you and your yeah. coaches have? yeah I, and it's it's been talked about and it just hasn't gotten a ton of momentum um you know there's a couple other things in there too that i think need to be looked at as far as on getaway day it, playing double headers i mean how many you have to play you know we haven't had to do that no. this year but to play two try to play two nine inning games on sunday hard to do that it's hard yeah. to get two nine inning games in on sunday so I know the the uh, SEC plays two sevens on Sunday if it comes down to that. So, and again, they all most of them charter their flights everywhere. So it's not even necessarily totally uh, travel related. It's just you know you're you're getting to Sunday. You're having to pit. You know have to back a pitcher up, and you know you're kind of messing with your pitching rotation. It just makes sense to me, um, especially with with our conference and the weather. Um, you, you're going to be playing in some cold temperatures. To try to play two nine-inning games on a Sunday, teams have flights. You know, nobody's flying charter flights very often. To me, it, it makes perfect sense to play at least one seven-inning game on Sunday. But. Yeah. Hey, Dorothy Lynch, homestyle light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities, 402-413-2400. Let's go to Battle Creek and Kent. Good evening, Kent. You're up with the coach. Hey, I got a question about uh... – the Saturday game against Minnesota. I know it's a week and a half ago on this last week's show, but there was a play. Casey was on first. Bryce was on third. Pitcher wasn't even in his motion. Uh, Casey takes off, gets about, looks like five feet from the base. Looks like he could have made it into second easy, and he just stops. Yep. Forces him into a pickle. Everybody's watching Bryce. Everybody's watching Casey. All of a sudden, Bryce keeps inching, keeps inching, keeps inching. He stills home. They play on him. Casey gets in. Was that an intentional play? Because it sure looked like it. <clears throat> yeah, it's a good question, Kent. Yeah, it was. It was a uh, it was a planned play there. Uh, first and third, um, two outs, I think, at the time. And I, I believe there were I think uh, so. there might have been two strikes on the batter as well. Um, but yeah, that's a planned play, and it works out perfect that you have our two fastest base runners on the bases together. 
um, and two of our better base runners. So yeah, he left early, um, you know, trying to draw that that pick throw um, to second base. And what he's trying to do at that point in time is he's trying to draw that second baseman to to run towards him and then get the ball in the first baseman's hands. And then he's going to have to be moving away from home plate, which is what it, I, I believe that's the way it played out. I think the first baseman ended up with the ball in his hands, which is what we want in that point in time. Uh, and then try to beat the ball to the plate. So um, it was a planned play. Yeah. It worked out well. It was part of, I think it was part of one of those eight run innings that we had. Yeah. Yeah, it was It was the big inning. Um, when it happened, my son and I looked at each other like, Casey could have laid down and fell. <laughs> so we knew it had to be intentional, but, you know, I just had to find out for sure. Yep, you were right. Kent, appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. 402-413-2400. You know, there's been... This has been an interesting team. You've hit so many home runs, second most ever in Nebraska history, and you may get the record before this thing's all done. The strikeout numbers are up a little bit. Yeah. Is that part of it, though? Is that kind of the changing of the game? More launch angles, maybe more home runs, but the strikeouts go up, or am I putting too much into that? Um, I, I think we strike out too much. I mean, I, I would prefer us to put the ball in play more often. Yeah. and. and um, sure, you're going to have a little bit of a trade-off, but Max doesn't strike out. Max is swinging most of the time when he goes to the plate. You know, Bryce is, he'll have some strikeouts, but he's also drawn a ton of walks, you know, so he's almost, he's almost one-to-one strikeout to walk there. Um, I, to me, it's the, the guys that are, we're not getting the power numbers from um, are striking out too much, and they need to play to their uh, roles a little bit better um, and just – compete to move the ball with two strikes I mean it, like I said you saw it um, in the case with, with with Dylan there on Sunday to kind of get us get us going off of that two you know he didn't hit it hard it just it just landed just in between the second baseman and the right fielder but he but he put the ball in play right there um, you know if you don't if you don't put the ball in play it's an empty at bat you know that you don't even make them make a play so um, yeah I mean I I would like to see the strikeout numbers go go down and part of that is as well when you get a lot of our strikeouts have been with runners in scoring position. We get a little passive. You know, when we're going good, we're really aggressive. And there's a reason that Max and Bryce, and, and now you've seen Gabe, Gabe, start to really pick up the RBI. Pay attention to their at-bats. They're swinging within the first three pitches pretty typically. Um, they're ready to hit, and that's how you drive in runs. And if you kind of get too picky or too passive in those RBI situations – Pitchers, his his awareness and his you know his compete is going up right there. So he's really bearing down. You got to be ready to hit, and you got to be ready to hit to the middle of the field. And so, um, yeah, we we strike out too much. That's something that that you know I'd like to see us be better at down the stretch. Charlie Fisher seems to be in a funk right now, where he, he's starting every bat 0-2. It just seems like that's the way it's going for him, and that's what happens. I think sometimes in slumps. What are you seeing from Charlie? Um, I, yeah, I think. It just pitch selection for him. I think it's just all pitch selection. Um, you know, when he when he swings at a pitch, it needs to be a pitch that he can drive. And um, you know, you've seen some early outs from him at times where he just you know maybe not get his best swing off. And um, like I said, also just the pitch selection part of it, where you know down 0-2 yeah. because you're taking some good pitches yeah. or maybe you're chasing um, you know to get down on the count. So. Um, you know he he's had a nice year for us. I mean he's you know hitting close to 300 and um, but kind of a, like a lot of the guys, I would like to see the walks maybe go up a little bit and um, just just having that line just keep moving. You know um, the the offensive line keep moving. That even if you're not getting a hit, are you taking something away from the pitcher? And, and when he's going good, you're seeing him do that. He's swinging at the right pitches and he's locked in and dialed in and. Um, that, that, that goes for everybody, but, um, yeah, I'd like to see him, you know, when he's going to swing, look to do damage and, and not just to put the ball in play. Guy that's given you a lift recently is Griffin Everett. Uh, the uh, grand slam that he hit Saturday to get you out for that 5 nothing lead, he's putting some good swings. That was a him. huge swing, obviously, in the first inning. I mean, that, that had, a chance to get out of, they had a chance to get out of that inning with us not getting a crooked number. He got down two strikes and just put a great swing on one. So, yeah, good to see him chipping in. Yeah. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com, member FDIC. More with the coach coming up, 402-413-2400. The number to call or fire off a text. We're back with more with the coach coming up. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. 
26 Husker students presented research findings on nuclear deterrence to a panel of U.S. Strategic Command officials at STRATCOM headquarters in Bellevue. The student-led presentation was the culmination of a semester of STRATCOM-guided research and the latest in a years-long partnership between STRATCOM and the National Security Studies Program at Nebraska. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynex has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cynex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cynex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cynex. Looking for a car buying experience tailored to you? Start with Woodhouse, a trusted partner for automotive needs and a proud member of the Nebraska community. With 18 brands and 21 sales and service locations, our dedicated Woodhouse team is ready to provide you a convenient and seamless transaction from anywhere. Whether purchasing, selling, or servicing, experience the difference with Woodhouse, the official auto dealer of Nebraska Athletics. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. 
more powerful than the Black Shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Huskers, two weeks left in the regular season. Nebraska in a four-way tie for fifth right now in the Big Ten Conference. Importantly, you've got tiebreakers over Michigan, who's a team right in your in the same neck of the woods, and Illinois, who's trying to get themselves in the field. Those could end up being big and still those series with Purdue left. But uh, coming down a home stretch here, three home games left. Senior day will be over the weekend. How many guys, do we have a number? How many guys are going to be? Well, you know, you've got some guys that went through senior day last year that will be getting the super senior. You know, like last year it was the, the jersey. Um, this year I think they get a different um, uh Maybe a canvas of this pretty cool. I think what they're going to get. So, um, so which would be like Griffin Everett and E. Fry. Yeah, those, those, guys. those guys and Shay and Shea. those guys that all went through it last year. Um, we'll do that, and then we'll have some guys that are in their fourth year, basically. That it's there's some some gray area there with with some of that. I mean, there's some guys that will still have another year of eligibility that will still go through senior day. So. Um, I think I, I couldn't give you the exact number, but I know there's several guys that did it last year that will do it again, and then several guys that are fourth years that are still trying to decide that if they want to come back and use their fifth year or not. Interesting weekend, and we, we talked about it on the broadcast yesterday as well. You've got a rare Saturday night home game. I yeah. guess television dictates some of yep. that for you. Yeah, that'll be TV. Um, knock, you know, knock on wood, it looks like the weather is going to cooperate with us. It's, you know, it's time of the year where it's warm, and we've had great crowds. I mean, we've had really, really good crowds and um, love to see another weekend of, of great crowds this weekend. Jeff and Omaha on our text line for you, Coach. Can you talk about what some pitchers you have coming in in the 2024 recruiting class? The 24 class? Uh, it probably means the 23 class. It probably means the guys that signed in November. For yeah. Um, yeah, we've got, we've got a few. Um, I, I, hate, I really hate to kind of name – recruits just because they maybe I don't want to put it too much uh, expectations on guys we have some some in-state arms that are is it um, a good year in the state it is it's really good there's a couple of guys in particular that um, are getting some pro interest um, and you know they're they have had good springs so far and um, so we'll have some some guys that are they 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 look they look the part you know they're going to be six three six four um, throw the ball low to mid 90s and and um, you know we've got some left-handers in that class as well that that um, you know give give a different look that way. So, um, so yeah, there's some there's some guys in there that that hopefully can step up next year. It goes in cycles, and we've had some pretty good runs of a lot of D1 players coming out of the state, which is not all that big a population, but both Lincoln and Omaha have been producing quite a few D1 players. Yeah, the the baseball in the state is outstanding, and and there's a ton of guys that that go division one it's it's the coaching it, you know there, there's a bigger um, presence of to me it's you know we're creating in nebraska we're really really good in the early 2000s a lot of those guys are giving back to the game now and they're coaching and mm -hmm. um even some guys that maybe didn't go to creighton in nebraska that went off and played at other places um around the country are giving back to the game as well in the state of nebraska so um, a lot of really good coaches here in the state um, the talent level just gets better and better um, each year, and, and there's certainly a lot better facilities popping up in, in Lincoln and Omaha than ever before. And, you know, don't sleep on some of these small towns, too. I mean, there's some, some good players there, and you head west in the state. Always really good baseball out there. I mean, Grand Island's been good to us, and, you know, there's some, some good players out that direction as sure well. Has. Buckle up, folks. Put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. All right, Penn State. 
didn't we did not play them last year. It's been two years. I think we went there two years ago. So this is a team you haven't seen in a while. They've had kind of an up and down year, like a lot of teams in our league. What's the early scout on the uh, Nittany Lions? Coming yeah, I, you know, haven't haven't dove too deep into them yet, but knowing, just kind of keeping up with some of their stuff and looking a little bit at some of their stuff today. Um, looks like they're swinging the bats better this year than they have maybe in years past. Um, to me, when I think of Penn State, they've always had good arms. They've yeah. always had guys that can really, really pitch, and, and they have some guys this year. Sorry, excuse me, that, that are doing that as well. But um, the, the the bats have been better for them this year, and, and they've, they've been more offensive. So, um, yeah, they, they've, they've gone on the road and won some games. And, and uh, like you said, they've been a little bit up and down, but they're, they're certainly a well-coached team, and they're going to come in. And um, like I said, it's going to be a great, great weekend to play baseball and have some great crowds, and they'll be ready to, to compete. How surprised are you, like, for a weekend when you see – Minnesota take a series from Michigan, which nobody would have expected that going in. Or Michigan State, who'd been really hot, goes to Illinois and gets swept. Does that does that surprise you as a coach, or do you go? That's it's baseball. Kind of our sport. It is. It is baseball. I mean, it just it, it's so interesting. The three game series. Kind of spoke to it earlier in the show how it can turn just on how the pitching goes in the first game, you know, or a team goes all in to win a game and, and uses all their best pitchers and you don't win, that can really set you back. I mean, that no, not, only mental, not only mentally for your team to lose a game with your guys on the mound, but also, hey, you use three or four of your highest leverage pitchers, you're going to have to get it done with some other guys. So, um, and you can run into weekends too where you just feel like you don't catch any breaks and the other team catches all the breaks and has all the momentum. And, you know, it is maybe a little surprising some of those results that you said, but, and I, I mean, Minnesota's Saturday guy throws 100, you know? I mean, they've yeah. got some, as we saw on Friday night, I mean, they handled our two best pitchers, uh, two of our best pitchers, as well as anybody has all year, you know? So, um, <clears throat> in Michigan State, I believe, was coming off a bye weekend um, out of conference, and maybe that, I don't know. It's Through just, their mojo off it's baseball, something. and, you know, there's been weekends where, um, you know, Illinois, they lost two of three to Northwestern, I believe, earlier in the season. So it, it's baseball. And th those three-game series and those weekend series are so quirky at times. And they can just turn. The whole series can turn uh, on one pitching, you know, one hit, you know, one error, um, and can kind of throw some things out of whack. Well, the Gophers have just had a strange year. They didn't win for like the first two and a half weekends. And I think it was one of the teams when we were in Minnesota, maybe it might have been Ole Miss, it's like, that's a really good baseball team. I yeah. know they're 0-8 or 1-8 yeah. at that point in time, but they're not bad. And we saw that when they were here. We, we got on them pretty good in, in one of the games. But, yeah, they can compete with you. Everybody's got good players. And, you know, everybody's well coached. And, you know, everybody has good facilities now. I mean, it's, it's all pretty – I mean, like you said, the, the standings are right there. And, um, you know, had we won yesterday's game, you're, you're sitting with a great chance to catch Maryland. You know, right. and not, we still could. I mean, it's, it's – we still could. We could go on a run and play great, um, and, and and go do that. And um, but it just it can turn on you know one pitch or one play. I had a question from Jim in Columbus. Want to know if there are there some guys you really need to step up here coming down the stretch? I think you kind of alluded that you need some arms yeah. to kind of really step <clears throat> up coming down the stretch. Yeah, I mean we need to get we need to get our Friday and Saturday guy pitching well on back to back days again. Uh, that that's where it starts. Um, could use some some good starts from. Uh, are some good innings uh, out of some left-handers out of the bullpen for us. Um, and, you know, we had a couple of guys in Cristo and Sears that have been throwing really, really well that, you know, we're going to need them to throw well because yeah. they've, they've got good arm. They've got good stuff. And, you know, we're going to need – we're going to have to rely on some of those guys. And maybe, it, maybe there's a guy that we don't know much about yet that, you know, is going to get more opportunities. Um, so – yeah, I mean, Jalen Worthley's had his moments for us where he's been good, had a rough day yesterday, he but did. he's a good pitcher, you know, and he's a competitor. So, um, you know, we're going to need those guys to stay in the fight and stay hungry. And um, and like I said, we have some some veteran arms, too, that, that we're going to need to pitch like veterans here down the stretch. Text question for you, Coach. How is the pitch selection to a batter determined? Sometimes it seems like we throw the same pitch multiple times uh, to the same batter. You're talking about us, our, our pitchers. The, yeah, um, it, a lot of it is on um, tendencies, and so we have um, on our scouting reports we have the ability to see what pitches that certain hitters don't handle well. Um, so maybe we're attacking 
what we consider a weakness for that hitter. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of executing the pitch and, and throwing it where it needs to be thrown. And, um, you know, we talked a little bit about the strikeouts on offense. To me, we've been hurt tremendously with two strike counts where we don't make our pitches. We'll get ahead in the count, but we don't, you know, we're not making the pitches that we need to make um, with two strikes. And so that that needs to that needs to change too. And we need to have the ability to bounce that breaking ball when we when we need it, get the swing and miss on the changeup, throw the fastball in uh, with conviction, and and get off the field and 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 get you know get out of some jams um, that way. How much conversation in the dugout goes on about pitches, or do you leave Jeff alone? I, yeah, I say nothing about pitch calling. I mean, Talk I, maybe between innings. Yeah, and I, I, I honestly, I stay completely out of it because I don't, you know, that's not my expertise. I mean, you know, I can, I just think it kind of muddies the water a little bit when, when it comes to a bunch of people having opinions on stuff. And, and um, so there's, uh, like I said, there's we've scouted, we've watched video, we've got information on hitters, this guy, this guy handles the fastball away great, doesn't handle the fastball in at all, and if you throw it up at all, he crushes it. You know, that, that, that type of information we have. So, um, you know, if you see multiple pitches the same in a row, maybe it's we're attacking a weakness on, on a hitter. Um, maybe the pitcher that we have on the mound just doesn't have a second pitch that he can go to at that point in time, which is, you know, um, that, could, that could be the case as well. The 1890 Initiative, helping Husker student-athletes navigate name, image, and likeness. To learn more or donate, visit 1890nebraska.com. A few minutes left with the coach, 402-413-2400. We're back to wrap up the show next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com donate. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a very big mistake. Hey, Joe, you think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have your underground utilities parked before you start digging? John, that's just for big projects. <laughs> Actually, it's for any digging project. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Joe. You found your electric line. Remember, safe digging always begins with a free call to 811. Want to borrow my phone, buddy? Brought to you by Nebraska 811. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line, text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe healthcare should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. 
It's time for us to see what's on tap. Presented by Bud Light Husker Baseball tomorrow night. We'll finish the Lightning game from Lincoln a couple weeks ago. Five o'clock first pitch. We'll resume that with uh, the bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh. Nobody out. Our, we'll take the air at 4.55 tomorrow. And then they'll play Creighton in the full nine-inning game at 7 o'clock. Husker softball headed to Champaign for the Big Ten tournament. They get a bye. They're the four seed. So they will play the 7 o'clock game Thursday night against the winner of Illinois and Wisconsin. That is what is on tap presented by Bud Light. 402-413-2400, the number to uh, dial us up with a comment or question. Tomorrow's going to be interesting because you got some guys that aren't available for you for that end of the game, but it all starts with the bases loaded. That's a, an interesting time to come to a bat yeah. for Gabe Swanson. He'll step in there with the bases loaded. Yeah, it, I don't know that I've had um, – I. If, I, if I've ever been part of a halted game, I don't know that I, I can rec- you know, recollect it right now. But, you know, like you said, to come into a game um, with the bases loaded in that, in that situation, um, Gabe's been swinging the bat well. And so good guy to have at the plate at that. Did you hang on to your lineup card yeah. from that game? So it's been stashed somewhere yeah, on your desk? Yeah, it's been snatched. Uh, yeah, it's been. Uh, I did the same thing. Stashed my- away in my office. And uh, I've got the lineup card, I've got the lineup sheet. The umpires have. I had um, Jared, our uh, sports information director, send us um, send me the box score today. You know, just remember, remind me who is already pitching the game right. and um, kind of what our lineup was too. And and uh, so yeah, Gabe Gabe was hitting in the seven hole in that game. You know, we've we've moved him up back up to four, and he's been really really good since we've done that. So like I said, um, good time to start. And Karen is, I think he's at an eighth, and so he's been swinging a good bat. So. Um, be good to get a crooked number there. How will you approach the day? Will you just get up there an hour or so before that first pitch? Are you going to go up and do BP? But how are you going to handle it? Yeah, we'll handle it like a normal pregame. Um, you'll go through and just get get ready uh, like a normal pregame, and and uh, and then that second game uh, will have to start at seven o'clock. So um, obviously, the, our hope is that the game ends quickly because mm-hmm. it means that we've scored there in the seventh and we've held held them down in the eighth and ninth innings. We are the home team, uh, obviously, there that first game. So, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have a little bit of break in between potentially there um, with a 7 o'clock start. But, yeah, we'll go up and um, we'll, we'll take do pregame and do everything, you know, like that, that first one's a nine-inning game. Probably different umpires? I would think it's going to be different umpires. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that we'll have that same crew. Yeah, which that mean again, everybody's starting really from scratch, although you've got bases loaded. Great situation. You hate you hated to see that thing stop because all the momentum mm-hmm. was with the Huskers when that thing got halted. So now you got to generate it and get it going right out of the gate. Yeah, and it, you know what better situation to be in though, uh, you know, as a hitter and as a team. So three home games left. I know you'd love to see great crowds out there to to root your team on. There's some big games. You got to try to get yourself to Omaha and get in that conference tournament. Yeah, yeah, we big week. They're, they're all big, and you know it's usually like I said, it comes down to the last couple of weeks and. Some separation happens in the standings, so um, be be a great weekend to uh, be a good week to to win a couple of games tomorrow first, and then and then have a great weekend and and, and uh, send the home crowd uh, off happy. Today off day for the guys, right? Yep, off day on Monday and um, travel back Sunday night and uh, be ready to get after it tomorrow. Did you see Emmett today? Did not see him at today, no, but reports are that he's feeling better. Good. Good to hear. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Game and a half or game and a third, I guess, tomorrow night. (laughs) Sounds good. Keep it Omaha. All right, thanks. Oscars taking on the Blue Jays tomorrow night. We'll start our pregame at 4.55, first pitch at 5, with bases loaded, and Gabe Swanson will be up to bat for the Big Red. Our Sports Signing Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime, 18 brands. And a huge selection of Prio that you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. Talk to you tomorrow night from Charles Schwab Field in Omaha. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. To win the game, you got to have more strength. You got to be tougher. You got to be reliable. You got to want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup 
that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow, bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you.